There he is, everybody. The man, the myth, the legend, Mark Farzetta, host of the Farzy Show, host of the Jacob Media Sports pregame show. Mark, did you have your cup of coffee this morning? You good to go? I, uh, as a matter of fact, I have already downed my espresso. Uh, I will have my second after after this fine interview with you, Jeff. How you doing, buddy? Uh, pretty good. I'll tell you what. I think I might have had about twenty or thirty cups of espresso total last week, just trying to get over this laryngitis I had. Oh. <laughs> Usually they say tea, not espresso. But you know, hey, to each their own. I guess twelve. I guess twelve will cure anything. You have twelve <laughs> cups of espresso. <laughs> well, that's true. I did have a lot of tea. I, I, I definitely had a lot of tea, especially before I went on a show. I was like just kind of drinking during the break. I'm like, all right, my, my throat's clogging up already. Do you know what I love? I love when people, if, especially in this business, when you have to talk, people are like, they hear you have a scratchy throat. They're like, hey, here, you, got, you know what you have to have? You have to have a little tea with honey and a little lemon. It's like, oh, my God. Thanks, Dr. Quinn. Like, <laughs> no one, I didn't think of that dude, already. I, yeah, whatever. People are trying to be helpful. Uh, doc, Dr. Quinn Medicine One. That's a show I haven't heard or watched in. I, I, don't, I don't think I've actually ever seen an episode. Of, my parents have probably seen the whole series at this point. I, I just really love the obscure references. I love to pull the obscure references with you especially. Yeah, well, we're kings of the 90s. So. By the way, you know we went on that TGIF binge a couple of weeks ago? The, True <laughs> TV had a marathon of step-by-step -step on. I'm not kidding. I think I watched it for like four straight hours. Oh, my, with, with Cody in the van and everything? Yeah. Yeah, Cody's van. I love Cody's van. And Suzanne Summers hawking the, the thigh masters and whatnot. <laughs> what a classic show. I, by the way, the only I swear the only reason people watch that, I mean, the show's fine, but I swear people love the theme song more than anything else. Oh, step by step, day by day. Oh, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. It seems like, you know, that, that's how the Eagles are right now, right? You know, oh, what? I was waiting for it. I was waiting for the segue. Brilliant. <laughs> uh, brilliant. Uh, uh, so... I have to ask you, Mark, do you think they're limping into the playoffs or are you concerned at all? Oh, concerned? No. Uh, limping? Yes. Uh, but uh, here's here's the thing. It's great that the Eagles won the Super Bowl in 2017. Let's just isolate that and take that for what it is. It was awesome. It was fantastic. But here's what sucked about it. OK, uh, that team should not have won. That team lost the MVP. That team had a banged up offensive line. That team lost a Hall of Fame left tackle in Jason Peters. They should not have won the Super Bowl by every, you know, uh, everything that else, everything else that makes sense. They should not have won the Super Bowl. That was the key. It lowered the bar for us to make us think that, oh, wait, hold on. You got a Jalen Hurts MVP type guy right now. He's playing. Nick Foles was an MVP type. He ended up being the MVP. But what I'm saying is that team set the expectations so low and obviously overachieved where why can't this Eagles team that's better than that Eagles team actually win again? So it's it kind of messed with our perception of reality, I guess. I just hope people understand that when this playoff run starts – I don't think the Eagles will be an underdog in their first game. Very true. Yeah, very true. Who is, in your mind, their biggest threat not to go to Glendale? Uh, I think it's San Francisco. I mean, you want to talk about the opposite of limping into the playoffs. If you're talking about who they're going to meet up with in the playoffs, it's, you know, obviously it's potentially the San Francisco 49ers. You win 10 games in a row. You have three different quarterbacks to start for you throughout the season, and you still just win? That's pretty impressive. And that defense, D'Amico Ryans, his name is in the ring already when it comes to head coaching candidacy, as it rightfully should. He hasn't missed a beat with that San Francisco defense, and what Nick Bosa has brought to the table time and time again is absolutely incredible what you're watching from that team. So as I watch the season unfold, I watch a team like um, the, the San Francisco 49ers. They're just as good as advertised. They do everything well. They're a fundamentally sound team. They're an aggressive team. And they really do a great job spreading the ball around. I mean, Christian McCaffrey is incredible, as we all know. But they got, they got guys all over that can hurt you. They're a very deep team. They're a well-coached team. Their game plans are usually on the money. And I think when you win with three different quarterbacks, that obviously lends itself to being versatile as a play caller like Kyle Shanahan is. What's crazy about the 49ers is Debo Samuel's been – injured he's been banged up the last couple of weeks and they need him to win the Super Bowl obviously mm -hmm. but they have really been a very good offense without him because they have 
Christian McCaffrey. George Kittle's finally getting the ball as much as he should. Brandon Ayuk's a, a really good receiver. It, there's just so many playmakers you can add. That offensive line is good. I, I think that's why Brock Purdy's transition has been so easy. It's it's not a vanilla game plan per se, but it's a game plan where he can succeed, which is why I'm curious. I kind of want to see San Francisco and Philadelphia meet because I think the Eagles' defensive line is the one thing that can kind of get this guy out of the pocket and make him skittish. I, I, and I, I would agree with that. Um, they definitely, the Eagles have a better answer to Bosa than the San Francisco 49ers do when it comes to an answer to Fletcher Cox, Javon Hargrave, Brandon Graham, and Asan Reddick. When they're trying to get after you in the backfield, they have the better answer for that. No question about that. But uh, like I said, they are a very well-coached team. The Eagles are a well-coached team. I think the Eagles do have the advantage. But if you're asking the question, who's the biggest threat? I don't really think there's much of a bigger threat than what the 49ers put at the Eagles table. Like I want the, I would love to see the Eagles face the Cowboys again. And I know aside from all the drama, I did, I would love to see the Eagles face the Cowboys again. And the number one reason is Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott can't, can't keep the ball in his own team's hands. Like it's impressive what he has done as far as turnovers go since coming back from being injured for those, what, four or five games earlier in the season. I mean, being the worst, being the best at throwing interceptions, really, he throws the most in the NFL when it comes to him coming off um, the, uh, the, you know, the uh, IR. Uh, to me, I have watched him, and I have watched him make bad reads. I have made, a, made uh, bad throws. It, he's just not the guy that you saw him take over, That who you saw to take over for Tony Romo all those years ago. So, and look, the drama and the, the, the storyline surrounding it obviously are great. But just in terms of what team seems like they're flailing the most right now, it seems like the Dallas Cowboys. Can you imagine, though, what the Eagles will play the Cowboys in that first playoff Ooh. game? And, and Dak, not even the storylines, but Dak has been playing like he's been playing. A lot of turnovers, and he throws multiple picks. Can you imagine how social media is going to be? Because the excuse for the Cowboys fans has been, well, you played Cooper Rush, and Cooper Rush really isn't that good. And I'm like, oh, no, a, Cooper Rush didn't throw a pick before that game. Cooper Rush didn't lose a game before that game. So now you're... Now you want to move the goalpost? Can you imagine if Dak would just play absolutely horrible oh. and Jalen Hurts would play at the MVP level? What what this city? I think the city would tear down just then. Uh, Jerry Jones would have to change his face again, but this time to even more unrecognizability. Like he would have to change his face again if that's what happened with Dallas coming to Philadelphia and losing and getting embarrassed by the Eagles. That's uh, that's kind of what I'm rooting for. Another Jerry Jones face change. So you you don't think that maybe the Giants I, – I don't think the Seahawks are going to advance, but you don't think maybe the Giants could come back in the Philly? Let me just say this real quick about the Seahawks. I, I'm not like a huge Geno Smith fan. Like I'm not the guy that was banging the jub, drum for him or anything like that. But like, I am impressed with him. Like I am very much impressed with it. First off, I got the opportunity to take over for Russell Wilson last year when he had the uh, the finger injury, came in, played well. Obviously got this opportunity this year. People don't realize this. I, I said this on Fox the other day. I said it on my show. He's, oh, he's less than two points lower than Jalen Hurts when it comes to passer rating this year. That's incredible. Geno Smith, of all people. And, and the biggest thing is that he helped lead his team into the playoffs, of course. But, um, yeah, the Seahawks, I, I don't love, but I do admire the season that they've had considering that they went through the franchise quarterback change there away from Russell Wilson. Um, the Giants have my attention. And it comes down to being, again, a well-coached team. Wink Martindale is a very good defense coordinator. The Eagles put up a lot of points on that team in their first meeting. The second time around, if you're Daniel Jones and you're Saquon Barkley and you look out there and you see what that offense did against this defense, the top-ranked defense, and you guys weren't able to do that, I mean, that's got to be a little bit of a uh, feather in their cap. That's got to be a little bit of a extra added, not feather in the cap, but extra added motivation to a second meeting with, or excuse me, a third meeting with the Eagles this year. So the Giants have my attention. I'll just say that. They don't scare me. They don't, I don't look at that game and, and think they're going to, the Eagles would lose that game, but I think it would be more respectable than the first meeting. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And it's an NFC East rivalry, right? The Eagles and Giants have played classic playoff games before. We all remember 08. The 06 game was great. So I got a funny story about the 06 uh, wildcard game. I lost power in the third quarter of that game. <laughs> and let's just say 18 year old Jeff was not too happy. I called the cable company. I said, you know, what's on, right? You, you know what I'm missing right now? And I think the Eagles were losing at that point. I can't remember. I, I, I actually don't remember much of the second half of that game. Cause I didn't see, it. I actually 
I got power back when the Eagles made their their final drive and Akers kicked the winning field goal with no time left. Mm. So it, it all worked out. <laughs> but the Eagles and Giants have played some memorable playoff games over the years. And again, when you meet for a third time, anything can happen. I still think the Eagles could be a team like that because they, they just have more talent and they'd be at home. But <laughs> But you never know, right? My see, look, you're even coughing on me. Yeah, you're, scoff, yeah, yeah. you're scoffing on me. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I think Eagles are not choke. I like let's go back to what you asked earlier about the Eagles limping into the playoffs. Um, so I did a very uh, I did a little light detective work. The end, the end of the 2017 season when Nick Foles was, was, was took over, he had the four touchdown game against the Giants, and then they they won, but they wet the bed against the Raiders. It was not a, a pretty game, uh, and then they got shut out in the last game of the season. Nick Foles played a little bit. Nate Sunfeld played the majority of the game. Uh, they they got shut out. They didn't, they they, they didn't score any points. So the Eagles in the final two weeks leading up to the end of the season, they scored two touchdowns combined in 2017 and 2018. This Eagles team has done the same thing. They've scored two touchdowns in the final two weeks yeah. of the season. So they're limping in. Yes, yeah, true. And you wanted to see the Eagles come away with Jalen Hurts back on the field. You wanted to see them come away with something better than a 22-16 to 16 win over the New York Giants. You wanted to see something better than that. You wanted to see a an incredible first half for Jay, with Jalen Hurts where he didn't even have to play in the second half. And instead, you know what you saw? You saw the last 90 seconds of that game matter. And Jalen Hurts still being out there on the football field. You didn't want, after an 8-0 start to the season, after a 13-1 and record going into Week 16, you didn't want the final two, three weeks of the season to matter, and it very much did. You didn't even want to have your starters have to play in those games. And yet they had to play, unfortunately. But it just didn't go that way. And I believe more than anything else, and I think there, this is factual more than an opinion, it's because of Jalen Hurts. He wasn't there. He was hurt. And I think he was more hurt than we originally thought. And there's a couple of reasons that if you want to get into that for a second. You remember when after the Bears game, I think it was the Wednesday press conference with Nick Sirianni, where he went on that little uh, rant about talking to his brother and his brother was so blown away that Jalen Hurts played with this particular injury. They didn't say what the injury was, but do you remember that? Nick Sirianni was up there. He was like, oh, I talked to my brother. And my brother was like, wow, he played with that? Like, really? He played with that? Right? Wow. Wow. That's my Nick Sirianni. But his brother was so blown away. I'm like, okay, his brother seems to know the severity of this injury. We don't. This seems like it's really being downplayed. It seems like it's not that big a deal. And then a couple of weeks go by, the Eagles take two losses. You see Jalen Hurts throw a little bit. He, he misses that next game. And then he comes back in this game, and you hear on the broadcast them talking about their sit-down. And for those that don't know, and I'm sure most people know, but for those that don't know, when you do a broadcast of a game, you get time with the coaches, you get time with the players for individual interviews. And one of the things Jalen Hurts told the broadcast crew was that he was really hurt in that game, and he probably should have come out against the Chicago Bears, and he was in a lot of pain. And Nick Sirianni acknowledged after the game that Jalen was really sore. And anytime Jalen Hurts was asked after the game, this past game against the Giants, how's the shoulder? Good enough. It's good enough. Yeah. It's good enough. So I don't think this was ever something that should have been taken lightly. I took it lightly. I didn't think he was that hurt. I thought they were just being super-duper extra cautious with their MVP candidate. But I think he was legit hurt, and I don't think he's 100% yet. I don't think he was 100% in that game. I think you might have had an, a maybe 80% Jalen Hurts playing that football game, and hopefully these next two weeks he gets right. Well, you know that Saints game? So this is one of the stories I was hearing about. Jalen Hurts really pushed to play in that game, as, yeah. we, as we all know. Yeah. But it did come down to the wire where it was going to be him or Gardner Minshew, and the Eagles said, hey, we're going to err on the shot, side of caution here. Not saying Jalen Hurts wasn't happy about it because he wants to be on the football field because he's a competitor, right? Sure. But it seemed like if that was a playoff game, Jalen Hurts would have got it out and played. But it wasn't. So they gave him an extra week, and you you could see Jalen uh, Jalen Hurts' body language on the sideline. He was not happy. He was on the sideline, and his team was losing. So I kind of knew, and a couple guys, I don't want to say they leaked it in the locker room, but they gave me the vibe that Jalen Hurts was going to play against the Giants no matter what. Mm. Well, he did. And – it just seemed like Jalen wanted to come back earlier than maybe the Eagles wanted him to. And again, this is the benefit when you're up three games or three to play. You can rest this guy a week. Now he's got another week to rest. I think Jalen Hurts is going to be fully fine for this, um, whoever they play in the divisional round. My concern was the rust. 
But I feel like he got that out of his system now. Uh, do you think it was a good thing, though, he played on Sunday? D definitely. I, I am a big believer in rust. I'm a big believer. And when in when, thing, when, when things aren't going well, you got to try to work the kinks out. That's why when you talk about maybe resting starters in the final game of the season, I think you should treat it like a preseason game. Have them go out there for a few series. Have them go out there for a quarter. Just try to get right a little bit. And I think this game was that. This game kind of reminded me of, uh, a boxing match where you had a champion take on a contender, not a big contender, but a contender. And you kind of carry them for 12 rounds just so everyone that paid their money on paper, a pay-per-view, you know, gets their money's worth. Right. That's what this kind of, this game against the giants reminded me of. I still would have liked uh, a little bit more of a knockout punch, maybe a knockout punch from the Eagles in this game to make me feel like, all right, they got this. Jalen Hurts can leave the game. Gardner Mitchell could come back in, whatever it might be. Uh, but watching this game unfold made me feel like that, that it was carrying another fighter for 12 rounds or maybe a few extra rounds just so people get their money worth, money's worth. But if you go back to that Joe Webb game for a second, not Davis Webb, but Joe Webb game, one of the things I said at the end of that season, because the Eagles were kind of sputtering offensively after a great run with Michael Vick, they were kind of sputtering at the end of that year. I did not like the idea of the starters not playing in that final game. I felt like the offense wasn't clicking like it used to. I felt like you need to put some good film on again so you could watch that, build the confidence up, roll into the playoffs with a little bit more of a head of steam. And they go out there against the um, the Packers, who end up going on to win the Super Bowl in that great Michael Vick year, MVP candidate Michael Vick year, and they end up having to settle for field goals, which, of course, David Akers missed a couple in that game. So uh, that, to me, is the perfect example of knocking rust off, getting momentum back, and then going to the playoffs. So, yes, I think you needed to have your starters on the field for this game to help get back on the same page. And the scapegoat of that game was one who now is one of the best head coaches in the NFL, John McDermott. I remember when they fired him. I, I wasn't crazy about McDermott when he was here, but I think that was because of the guy he was replacing. Yeah, of course, yeah. But I, I'm thinking to myself, hold on a second. They win that game and David Akers makes two field goals. And the offense sputtered, like you said. They started out slow. They got high in the second half of that playoff game. So, yeah, I'm glad they played that Giants game. I'm glad they got a chance to shake off the rust. Miles Sanders got a little bit loose. J Jalen Sanders, I mean, Jalen Hurts definitely got plenty, plenty of reps. I liked how he threw 35 passes in this game. I, I liked how the Eagles were they, – they, they wanted to get that shoulder loose. And, and now – He's prepping with Nick Sirianni already. He's prepping with Shane Steichen for that first playoff of both. They're probably watching every single team that they can play. There's four of them. So I got to ask you, Mark Farzetta, which one of them, as a as a fan, which one do you want? Oh, I definitely want the Cowboys. Oh, oh I definitely yeah. want the Cowboys. As a Just as a fan? I mean, for all the reasons we talked about earlier, I think, first of all, I just think Dak sucks right now. So I'd like to see Dak come into town. First of all, that would mean a terrible Dak Prescott would have to beat Tom Brady in Tampa, which he's had a little bit of a problem with doing lately. Uh, but then I'd have to come north and play the Eagles. So let's assume he plays well for a second. Let's assume it's a defensive win, okay? The, the Cowboys' defense is great. They shut out Tom Brady, and he comes up. I want to see the Cowboys. I want that smoke. I want that storyline. I want that drama. And I want that overall satisfaction where – if you lose the NFC Championship game, you still, ah, you know, well, at least we beat the Cowboys. We had a 14-win season. We had two 1,000-yard receivers. We had a 1,000-yard rusher. We had an MVP candidate quarterback. He answered the question of whether or not he's the guy. He's the guy. Oh, and you beat the Cowboys. So that's always fun. That's a nice somewhat consolation prize. So I want the Cowboys. Uh, another team that I do want to face is the team the Cowboys are facing. There is something about beating a Todd Bowles defense. And I know he's the head coach now, but let's face it, going into the offseason, the Hurts haters, number one bullet they put in the chamber was, was the NFL films catching it on the sideline. This guy can't read a defense. And for Jalen Hurts to then go on and take all that defense as this version of Jalen Hurts, the new and improved Jalen Hurts, and to put up a, 40 burger on them or even a 30 burger if that's even a burger maybe that's more of a slider um that would be great that would be i think a great exclamation point on just how much jalen hurts has improved as a quarterback in the nfl to go out there and beat a todd bowles defense that once said this guy can't read a defense so that's that's the other that's the other team i'd like to face uh so i really i'm going to be paying a lot of attention as everybody will 
uh, to the Dallas Cowboys and uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That NFL Films clip was so overplayed, by the way. Uh, and for one, it bugged me as a former defensive player. I used to talk crap on the offensives all the time, especially opposing quarterbacks, especially on the sideline. Though, if you can imagine, that goes on everywhere. Yeah. That's with that's with every quarterback. It's like Dak, Dak who? I remember that was a thing, like Dak who? And no one really blew it up, but they blew it up because it was Jalen Hurts, and that was the guy who got benched for Tua. Not the fact that he only lost two games as a starter at Alabama or they got better every year. So, yeah, I agree. That would be some vindication there. But I want to ask you too, Mark Farzetta, is a disappointing season for this team. Do they have to go to Super Bowl now that they're the one? Now that they're the one? Uh, I mean, anytime you're a one seed, that's the expectation. When the Eagles have had that one seed, they've at least made it to the conference championship. So I would think satisfactory. Yes, you would have to make it to the to the Super Bowl. Win the Super Bowl is the obvious, you know, icing on the cake for everything. It's 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 the uh, it's the, it's the entree. It's the icing on the cake. It's everything. It's a nice wine pairing to go along with the a nice juicy steak. It's it's everything. Um, but I think the the fact of the matter is this team needs to make it to at least the NFC. This team, Jailers needs to win a playoff game because guess what? Right after not being able to read a defense last year, you know what the next count? You know what the next argument is? The guy can't win the big game. Zero and two in the playoffs. I mean, Dak Prescott's one in three in the playoffs in his career, then he's branded a loser. He's, he's, he's at least won a playoff game. Jalen Hurts has got to win a playoff game. That's that's what has to happen after all this. When you're a young team, uh, when you're a young quarterback, excuse me, and you're building, you got to at least win that playoff game. And plus, there's a lot of guys in the offseason that got to get re-signed, especially on the defensive side of things. It, it, Jalen Hurts is great and a great quarterback and put a lot of deodorant and a lot of stinky spots but right now it's there for the taking. The Eagles got to at least make it to the NFC Championship game. Uh, at, at, at anything short of that, a one and done and a 14 year, a 14 win year will feel like it was a waste. And that's the thing, too. I, I, I agree with you. I, I think they got to win at least one playoff game just to get rid of that, that narrative. Like you said, he can't win a playoff game or and I don't want to hear, oh, he should have won that game. No, no. You win a playoff game, you win a playoff game. Like, right. A lot of people still like to get on Lamar Jackson for his playoff record. I'm like, hold on. He went to Tennessee when they were a really good team and kicked the snot out of them. He got the snot kicked out of him the next week in Buffalo, but he was on the road and he won that game. And he's still, like you said, he's labeled the loser. Right. I think his his playoff record's one and two or something like it. One you got to win. You got to win. Yeah, exactly. You got to win these playoff games. And I think I think Jalen Hurts is a top five quarterback in the NFL this year. But what makes Patrick Mahomes, what makes Josh Allen, what makes Joe Burrow, these top five quarterbacks are, especially the young guys, they've gone deep in the playoffs and they want to play. If Jalen Nurse can make a run like that, he's definitely in that conversation. A thousand percent. And I think he can. I think they will win their first playoff game. Whoever they they get out of the four teams they could play, I see the Eagles winning. I don't see them getting a threat until they're in the NFC Championship game. I, I agree with you. And I still can't believe what this atmosphere is going to be like in – what, 13 days, maybe 12, depending on when they play. Right. I, I just think, and we were asked this by uh, Rick Goss of Dallas Morning News. I'm in, like, this poll with a bunch of, I, I don't want to call them, like, steam writers, but writers that are way better than me. Let's just put it that way. Okay. And some of them are Hall of Fame writers. And I got, my comment on Philadelphia got published in the article because we were arguing over home field advantage. And I said, whoa, 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 what about Philadelphia? We mentioned Kansas City, we mentioned Buffalo, we mentioned Green Bay. I said, not only is it cold in Philadelphia in January, but you got the craziest, craziest fan base of them all. And Kansas City's got a crazy fan base. Buffalo's got a crazy fan base. The Packers are the Packers. But go in the Lincoln Financial Field in January, based on that 17 playoff run, and tell me what you remember. And... I didn't even go into the vet yet. And then I went on this spiel about the vet. I'm like, you know, the Eagles went like 21 years without losing a home playoff game at the vet. That's how dangerous the vet was. So you're telling me you go into Philadelphia, you better play your best game because the fans are going to be ready. It's going to be cold. That, that grass is going to be hard. Philadelphia. I, I think Philadelphia is the one city. A lot of teams just don't want to go to, in a playoff game, especially a, a divisional round or conference style game. 
I have heard stories, such great stories uh, from players coming into Philadelphia for the first time and them like literally having to take their headphones off and be like, what the hell is this? Like it's, it's a totally different animal. My One of my favorite things from the Super Bowl run that entire season, one of my favorite things was listening to Sean McVay talk about how he had the game plan for Eagles fans in a Rams home game. Because he could, he had to practice the silent count because he knew Eagles fans were going to be taking over the uh, the, the, the what is it, the Coliseum out yeah. there in Los Angeles. Uh, hearing Eli Manning say after a game at MetLife Stadium that his offensive line couldn't hear him because of Eagles fans at MetLife Stadium on a crucial play at the end of the game that the Giants ended up botching the play. So I don't know any other fan base that gets game planned for like the Philadelphia Eagles fan base does. So imagine a stadium full of those guys. Uh, yeah, that's pretty intimidating. That matters. That is a factor. That's not just blowing smoke. That's not a cute storyline to play to the home crowd. That's what other P other head coaches and players have said about Philadelphia. I'll tell you this real quick. I remember do I was doing a Sunday night game in uh, – New Orleans uh, some years ago. And Zach Streif, who was, uh, I think it was a right tackle, I want to say. I, I remember Drew. him. Yeah. Um, I ended up meeting him at a bar. Uh, he was friends with the people I was hanging out with. And he he said, oh, you're from Philadelphia? I said, yeah. And he goes, oh, man. He goes, the fans, man. That's a that's no joke. And I go, yeah, they're, they're crazy. He goes, no, let me tell you. Because Sean Payton, I think most people realize he was a coach here in Philadelphia for a little bit. And he said his first year in New Orleans – the team bus ride from the hotel to the stadium. When they got a, about a half mile from the stadium, Sean Payton got on the like got, got stood up and got everybody's attention. He goes, "Guys, headphones off. Uh, you know what? Uh, you know iPads off. Whatever. I want you to hear what you're up against." And as they drove to the stadium and they got to around the tailgate areas and the parking lots and started making their way into the stadium itself. People were throwing stuff at the bus. People were apparently egging the bus. People were yelling. They could hear through the bus, uh, through the bus windows, what everyone was yelling at him. And he was like, damn. And this is the story he's telling me. He's like, you guys are just different. You guys are just different in Philadelphia. And I remember thinking, I am going to dine on that story for the rest of my life. I said, man, that is incredible. He goes, yeah, man, you guys are the real deal. I got to give you credit. Saints ended up winning the game, unfortunately. But um, he goes, I'll never forget my first ride into the stadium. I just thought these people are different. You know, one of the craziest moments I, I think of Eagles home playoff games, and everybody likes to talk about, you know, the Patrick Peterson air sets return for a touchdown, which sure. I agree it was loud. Right. I can say this, and this is only a wild card game, but you remember how this city was starving for five years for just good football, not playoff football, good football, and Andy Reid got it. And when Hugh Douglas beat George Hageman and just ran over Sean King and got in the force that I've never heard that stadium, the vet, just as loud as it could be because they're like, all right, we're back. McNabb scores the touchdown right after that. And, you know, it was it was cold. It was really cold that day. And you knew the, the narrative of Tampa in sub-40 degree temperatures at that point. They didn't have a win. You kind of knew it was over. Then Eagles get the ball back and go score again. And you're like, there's no way. There, there's no way. Not in front of this crowd. It just wasn't going to happen. And the Eagles have provided a lot of good memories of home playoff games. I mean, my dad still talks about the 1980 NFC Championship game. He goes, oh, once Wilbur ran, you knew it was over. Right. Like, th there was no way they were winning that game. Oh, by the way, it was really cold then, too. That's why I hate how we're having these warm Januaries. I want it to be like 5, 10 degrees out. And I want to see the balmy San Francisco 49ers come in here and be like, all right, Brock. Yeah, you get the yeah, you can say Seattle's tough, whatever. No. Come come in here. Come in here, Brock Purdy. You know, <laughs> Dak Prescott, same thing. And Dak's played in cold games before, but not in the playoffs. And I I just hope it gets really, really cold over the next couple of weeks because that's just gonna make the experience that much better. Yeah, but not not too cold where it affects Jalen Hurts' shoulder too. But you know, just yeah. just enough cold, enough cold. I'll just take yeah, enough. I, cold. yeah, enough cold. I don't want snow. I just want cold. <laughs> I want to see breath. That's what I want to say. Yeah, yeah. You want those old NFL films where the guy goes, "Dallas, we hate you." You can see <laughs> his breath. You can see his breath coming out. It's. I I'll say this. I don't think there's a home field advantage like Philly. I, I've you know 
I thought Lambeau Field once had that, and then Michael Vick kind of took that away. Oh, yeah. Michael Vick, Colin Kaepernick, Eli Manning. Like, those guys absolutely took that away. Oh, yeah. And then, well, you know who else took it away? Dan Campbell and the Lions. The Packers should have lost that game. Yeah, no. Quay Walker? What the hell is it? Yeah, Quay Walker. Yeah, Quay, Quay Walker. Quay Walker. I, I I haven't seen the NFL take any other action yet. I haven't seen anything come out. I, I don't know of you, but uh, despicable. It, it, it is. I, I, I any time if, if it gets mentioned, I just have to bring it up. Like, what the hell are you doing, man? And like six, six days after Demar Hamlin. Uh, I I I very rarely root for like suspensions of any sort, but <laughs> Jesus, Mary and Joe, that is absolutely ridiculous. The fact that he did that. I forget who it was in the Packers followed up with a little shove. Like if like even if a trainer comes out there and is like pushing people out of the way, you don't do that. The trainer like gave a little nudge. Like, I don't know if you've ever bartended or whatever, but like that was a bartender excuse me. It was a tap on the shoulder type of type of excuse me. The most polite excuse me there is. And he took exception to it. Despicable. I hope the league takes some kind of action against him. Yeah. And did, did you see him walking into the tunnel? I think he sounded, I was trying to read his list, but it sounded like I didn't do anything. <laughs> it was embarrassing. Uh, I'm like, it was terrible. It was terrible. Anyway, Eagles are awesome. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. That's how we get in every conversation. Right? I know, right? Yeah. So anyway, the Eagles are great. But by the way, what you were saying about the Eagles providing great memories and all that stuff, my brother's got a running joke that he always loves. He's, um, he always tells me great Philadelphia moments followed by horrible disappointments. Like, he's just like, this is a great moment. And I feel like the Andy Reid era, we had all these wonderful moments. And it was always followed by an NFC Championship loss. The Rondé Barber, or the, uh, yeah, the Rondé uh, Barber pick don't, six. Don't, don't, don't get I know. I know. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I, I always say I, I'm a crazy person at times. I rewatch that game all the time to, to, to find out what they did wrong. And I still, I, I remember every play of that game, every little miss block. It's crazy. Like, I still remember Hugh Douglas having to go to the bathroom, and I'm freaking screaming because, dude, what are you doing? It's the NFC Championship wow. game. You are a psycho. You oh, are. I know. You are a glutton for punishment, my friend. Uh, Joe Jarevicius will, and again, I'm a Penn State guy. Joe Jarevicius will forever be etched in my brain, and how he just managed to get sixty some yards off the Eagles. It's, mm. it's a. They should have never lost that game. Not how they started. Not with Brian Mitchell taking that kick back to 25 and do scoring two plays later. It should have never happened. Did my sign fall? I just noticed my sign's falling. Did it fall? It is a little crooked. A little crooked. Yeah, you know what it is? That's what happens, that's what happens when drunk. we talk. That's what happens when we talk playoff disappointment, Mark. Farsak. I think I, I think when I said Rondé Barber, I think it just it, I think it, it went astray. It, it's fate, it's fate, Mark. I, anyway, I appreciate you coming on, my man. Uh, I always enjoy our conversation. I'm gonna have to have you on again during the playoffs because we gotta talk great Eagles postseason memories, and hopefully we we get some more. Yeah, and all time TGIF lineups, of course. You know what? We gotta do that. We should like. I know there's a TGIF podcast because my buddy hosts it, and it's pretty popular. We gotta <laughs> we gotta ask if we can get on there so we can give our takes on TGIF. Da- oh, uh, do you want piping hot takes on? How much of a hit TJF took when Perfect Strangers went off? Do you want piping hot takes? We got or, or when they got rid of the mice. The mice, come on! Wait, yeah. I'm trying to remember. Was it thank God it's Friday, or was it thank goodness, or was it thank goodness it's funny? I, I can't bl- remember. I think it was thank goodness. I think they went goodness. Uh, thank goodness it's Friday. I think that's what they went to. I think that's what they went to. <laughs> All right, Mark Farzetta. Well, I'm up against it, my friend, but we will talk. <laughs> Absolutely. Jeff, always a pleasure, man. Thanks so much. Yep, you got it.